John, let's, uh, I want to review 10 Threads to Revival. 10 Threads to Revival. Sorry, if you can't see me, it's kind of shadowy in here. Here we go. Um, and uh, I, I uh, blogged about this, so it's online, johnburton.net slash articles. You can read it there. But uh, just real briefly, just want to hit on what, what I see is 10. There's a lot more than this, of course, but 10 Threads to an Outpouring, 10 Threads to Revival. What would stop God from breaking out in a region? Here we are in Detroit. I'm about to go pick up Dr. Brian Simmons, who's carrying the fire right now and prophesying a 50-year revival in Detroit. But it's up to Detroit whether we want it or not. So are we going to respond or are we not? So far, response is limited. And so, uh, you know, there's over 19,000 cities in the nation, none of them experiencing Revival, biblical normalcy. So we've got to we've got to resolve this issue. Number one threat. Number one, in no particular order, the local church, the local church, and the whole idea here is if local church calendars and focuses are trumping the regional church and the emphasis there, we've got a problem. If people are not released into the city mission because of local church, of an oversaturated, um, overemphasized local church calendar, then we have a problem. You can read more about that there. Number two, a belief in fate. This is one of the uh, one of the enemies in my book, Six Enemies of Fulfilled Destiny, where we just believe that if God prophesies that there's going to be a revival, then we just sit back and wait for it to happen. And and fate would, would dictate what happens in life. When the reality is, is Man, God, God in his wisdom and sovereignty decided to give you and me um, a massive part to play in this thing so we can determine whether revival comes or it doesn't. You know, we see that throughout scripture, and uh, you, can, you can pray on that yourself. Next one, number three, taking a wait-and-see approach. I actually have heard about pastors saying, you know, I'm just going to wait and see if this thing's really God. And then if it is, maybe we'll jump in. And, well, that that attitude right there uh, is heavy enough, weighty enough to cause revival not to land. God has called us to steward, uh, to, uh, to steward the fire, to tend the fire, and in our unwitting arrogance, we have reassigned that job to God. Like, God, if you want to fire it launch, then you do it. We're going to sit back and we're going to just wait. And we've got to be careful with that. Okay, the next one, number four, the scattering movement. The scattering movement, I've talked a whole lot about this, where people are scattered, they're not together. I believe we need to see the stadiums full continually. We need to see uh, people together. We need to, we need to get, uh, uh, get the city church focused and have the city church together. You know, for example, I'm gathering 1,000 intercessors every Friday night from 10 to midnight, calling every pastor, every leader in the city, every intercessor, to be together. We're not out doing our own things, scattered around, but we're actually together advancing the city mission. Number, what are we on, number five? The seeker sensitive movement. Wow. How in the world, you know, I'll say it this way, though, and then I'll move on. I have told the folks at Revival Church continually that I refuse to tone down the activity of the Holy Spirit out of respect of those less hungry. All right, I will leave it at that. Number six, a lack of intercession. Lack of intercession. We've got to have radical, continual intercession. We've got to gather together. We've got to pray. Number, what did I say, seven? <laughs> yeah. A fear of loss. Pastors, if you fear losing your church, losing your people, losing money, losing your reputation as you advance toward revival, um, then revival probably won't come. We've adopted a marginalized church experience because it's the it seems to be the quickest way to grow a church, the safest way. We've got to deal with that. Number eight, unbelief. It's amazing to me how miracles, signs, wonders, healing, power, trembling is also rare in the church. Unbelief. Number nine, seeking an enhanced life, an enhanced life. God is not coming to enhance our life. He's coming to wreck it, break us. Okay? We don't want to warm ourselves by the fire. We want to be consumed in the fire. And number 10, a lack of an immediate response. And this, 
simply requires that we're together continually. If we're only together two hours a week on a Sunday in a local church setting, it's, it's laughable. This won't happen. We've got to be continually responsive and gathering together. So, for example, in a moment, let's say an alarm is sounded on a, on a, on a Friday night, and hey, city church gathered together, there's a prophetic message, we need to pray on this. Every church in the city, every church, closing their doors, pastors, leading their people to the stadium, to the convention center, wherever, because of the regional emphasis, the regional call. And so there you have it. Let me know what you think. Just go to johnburton.com slash articles. At the uh, time of this recording, it's the most recent article there, but it's titled 10 Threats to Revival. You can search it, search for it. All right? Let me know what you think. Bye.